Hey folks, nothingwire.com and we're at the launch of the brand new, much awaited Samsung Galaxy S4. Yeah, so this is the Galaxy S4. You have both the colors that will be available in India, the white frost and the black mist. So I'm gonna quickly put the white phone away. I'm gonna show you the black one, mainly because the textures here are more apparent on the black mist one. So, uh, this is the S4 and it's an upgrade of the S3, Here you can see, so the colors are much similar, although not the shapes. The S3 has more curves and the S4 has um, less round edges, but it feels much lighter than even the S3 with a smaller um, screen size. Now let's, when you compare it to the Note 2, you can see the Note 2 is much larger, um, understandably at 5.5 inch. But what really scores for the S2, uh, for the S4 is that this, uh, despite of being a 5 inch device with a removable battery, it's amazingly light and it's only about uh, 130 gram, although it's about only 3 grams lighter than the S3 in your hand it feels amazingly it feels uh, almost featherweight mainly because of the ergonomical design that the whole phone has it also fits in your hand perfectly the front side is dominated by the 5 inch full HD AMOLED screen it has 441 ppi color density and has a pentile matrix and not an RGB matrix so even the S3 had a pentile matrix so on top you have the earpiece there the LED notification light the RGB light sensor then you have the IR uh, gesture detection sensor here you have a proximity sensor and your 2MP front camera below you have the very familiar and almost like S3 home key and then you have the soft back and the menu case. On the right side, you have the power button there. On top, you have the IR blaster. Then you have a mic and you have the 3.5 mm jack. This way, you have the volume rocker. And below, you'll have the micro USB port and then your mouthpiece. On the back side, you have the 13 MP camera with an LED flash and your speaker grills here, the Samsung logo. The back is again very similar to the S3, but it has a very nice, uh, uh, you can say checkerboard like texture that gives a little playful look to the phone. Even uh, that texture is even on the front, although it's below uh, the Gorilla Glass 3 protection. So you can see if you can make out the textures a bit the right side has a very galaxy grand like but much more premium looking brushed metal side here you see it almost tells you as if the phone is made of metal but sadly no but it's made of almost as um, almost as strong polycarbonate material and Samsung says they have selected this polycarbonate material really carefully to give the whole phone a very uh, sturdy and durable look and feel. Okay, so check out the interface now. The Galaxy S4 runs on Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. That's the latest version of the OS. Now you see a familiar um, TouchWiz UI there. You can add or remove home screen. Let's see. You can also customize your app dock as was before. Now there is your notification bar. Now one cool addition here is I've pulled in with one finger. Now if I pull it with two fingers, I'll have the all the quick uh, function menu here. Now practically, um, the ones that are glowing are active. So practically, they all are in this menu. But then when I swipe down with both hands, I get to see all of them on one page. So it becomes that much more convenient for me to switch on and off um, the icons. So that's the main app deck there. 
A uh, lot of usual um, Google and uh, Samsung in-house apps, also a lot of new additions here. Now, for example, you have a Samsung Hub. So they basically collaborated your their Reader's Hub and Games Hub and other stuff to give you one window for um, all the content. So you can buy your music here, you can buy your videos, watch videos, games and other stuff here that you can see. There is also the Learning Hub. And then you have uh, your own Samsung apps which looks a bit different on Telebin 4.2.2, this version of Touch UI. You have Samsung Link which is basically a DLNA service uh, through which you can play content wirelessly on your Samsung Smart TV. Then you have um, Watch On which uh, takes advantage of the IR Bluster here. Uh, and you can use this device as a universal remote control for practically all or almost all um, brands of devices. They can see TV, set up box, DVD player, other stuff. So you can just go to TV and you can select the brand. And because you know um, RF frequency bandwidth is very limited, so the preset bandwidth uh, here almost always detect the bandwidth on which your device operates then you have the 13 MP back camera there you go the Samsung promises almost zero shutter lag yeah so almost zero shutter lag but not zero shutter lag yeah so that's front camera there you see and then you have something called as dual camera where both your back and front camera works together now I know that's a cheesy kind of a frame but you can always um, change the frame for here so let's say you're doing a bungee jumping and you want to capture uh, the location in front and then also your um, excitement so you will come here there you go and the location will come there so it gives a kind of a complete experience with you involved in the scene so that's a pretty nifty feature by the way yeah so uh, we'll quickly go to settings so you have quick settings like uh, the galaxy camera you also have some modes like there in Galaxy camera of course understandably because it's a phone it does not have the same semi-automatic modes like uh, aperture priority and shutter priority but you pretty much get all the scene modes plus particularly three extra scenes called sound and shot drama shot and animated photo so uh, sound and shot captures your sound while you click a still uh, drama shots clicks a sequence of events so for example if you're clicking a moving subject like you can see in the um, thumbnail here it will show all the positions in one particular still and then you have an animated photo which is kind of uh, you can make certain part of the still uh, animated to give it kind of a GIF look and what else? So that's how you toggle to video recording. But this guy records at a full HD. And the front camera also records at full HD and it captures stills at a 2 MP. As I told you, the back camera captures still at a maximum of 13 MP. Uh, Samsung did not advertise this about the sensor size much. So I'm assuming the sensor size would be the similar 1 by 3.2 inch sensor. Although I'm not sure, I might be wrong, but then uh, if it was any bigger, then I assume the company would have advertised it. I'm gonna show you the air view feature that you've come to lo uh, love, at least I, in the Note 2. Now you used to hover your S Pen over the, the thumbnails and it, it, it used to show you the photos inside. So what if the uh, Galaxy S4 does not have the S Pen? You can still use your fingers to 
have the same AFUF accuracy and it also extend similarly to videos now when I'm playing a video when I'm playing a video I can have the same the same every feature and wherever I want I can simply click there and it will come there let's see this AirView feature similarly extend to both messages, mails and wherever um, the AirView applied in Note 2 if not less what else so let's quickly go to settings and now you have different category of settings arranged in a horizontal way rather than uh, infinite scrolling um, like we used to have in 4.1 all these options are there the host of new motion uh, gestures control features in the Galaxy S4 so there you see 4.2.2 and you can see the model number is GTI 9500 uh, there is also a model number called I9505 I which is on sale in the US so 9505 is the 1.9 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 600 version and this that is the I9500 has an Exynos, Oct Exynos 5 octa core chipset and also a combination of a 1.6 gigahertz quad core a15 plus uh, 1.2 gigahertz quad core A7 processors. So basically, uh, you know, cumulatively they are an octa core CPU. Also, um, although they generally do not perform uh, together. Now, whenever let's say you're performing a task which is less memory hogging, let's say you're reading a mail or uh, doing something less intensive task the 1.2 gigahertz quad core a7 uh, CPU comes into picture the moment you switch to heavier tasks like gaming and all your 1.6 gigahertz quad core a15 CPU comes into the picture much like the Optimus technology that N uh, Nvidia invented um, a few years uh, ago but this feature uh, mainly saves your battery because if you have a very higher clogged CPU uh, even while you're probably not using or not utilizing the power of the CPU but then because it's only the CPU available it will utilize or use that particular CPU so your battery drains faster but now because there's a switching available here so whenever you're not doing a memory intensive task you're practically saving battery uh, with a less powerful CPU that is the A7 yeah, so now the browser now here again we have some nice little nifty um, features but let's check out the settings first flash player is not supported after jelly bean there you see so you can create new windows from here now let's check out some of the gestures and uh, there you see now let's say we are reading a wikipedia page on india there you see and you normally scroll down here but you can also scroll up or down only by gesture for example there you see And the moment I look up or I look down, it will automatically scroll. Now I'm looking at it, my eyes are looking at this portion and you could see it was automatically scrolling. If I look up, it will automatically scroll up. 
so this is kind of an extension of the smart stay you can see the smart stay used to only keep the device awake now you also can control the movement you can also go forward or backwards let's say for example I open something else here let's open Google and then I need to go back there you see I can go forward there you see you have the video app so Samsung's made the some of the apps uh, pretty youthful looking and it kind of gives the whole um, ecosystem a uh, non-serious kind of a look you have the S translator which basically translates um, the language that you do not know to the language that you know now, it supports text as well as speak suppose I'll uh, talk something in English hey what's up it's taking a while because of the slow connection here but it's given that in Korean so again uh, I have seen it it did not take uh, more than one try to recognize whatever um, sentences I spoke to it so I found it I found at least the voice recognition much more precise than as voice then you have the s health which makes use of some of the uh, sensors here to give you uh, reading of your environment um, around you have a story album now story album uh, is a feature which automatically uh, with an algorithm fits audio and uh, animation into your stills and uh, make kind of a video um, or moving still so that you can show all of your trip videos in one particular file to the world you have group play with which you can play content on other galaxy s4 device the same for example you're playing a music here so once you join the group you can have the music or output via all the speaker apps of all um, the galaxy s4 devices connected a pretty good when you're having a party and you want a surround sound because you can keep one s4 device here one s4 device on your left and you can have a practical 5.1 surround sound so that's pretty much about it you have the widget here so we've experienced lag at times with some animations and uh, the Samsung chief says that the quad core version that um, goes on sale in the US and this octa core version there is no definite advantage of this octa core version in terms of speed Yeah, so that is the Galaxy S4 for you. It's definitely uh, one of the best devices in the market right now. But then I just have a feeling it's kind of starting to get a little predictable. Thank you.